doesn't matter type thing. <laughs> I mean, how down and uh, just kind of setting up potentially for, for the game yeah. winning shot? Um, so I have a pregame ritual. During the national anthem, I always say a prayer the whole time. And uh, what I was thinking during that was mm -hmm. this game here has been my dream, but it's also it could be my nightmare at the same time. So we were kind of in control of the whole game until they made that final push in the fourth quarter. And it hit me when they took the lead. I'm like, is this going to be my nightmare? I'm like, no, this, this can't be how it goes. I spent all that time in the gym this summer, all that time rehabbing, and it's not for nothing. And I knew that I didn't spend that time for a blowout. I didn't spend that time for a just some lame game. I spent that time for these close games. And... I knew that's why all that was going on. I'm like, it's coming down to it for a big moment that I've prepared for. Mike, so we're going to stick right here with you. And uh, obviously, both of you, Micah and Kendall, you both can relate to this, right? Both had some injuries mm -hmm. last year that really mm -hmm. kind of kept you sidelined. So, Micah, coming back uh, from your injury, um, I mean, what kind of season are you looking for? What are you What are you trying to put together out of it? And I mean, do you have those goals for yourself and obviously team goals that uh, you're striving for right now? <clears throat> Um, for me, uh, personally, I want to be more well-rounded. I want, <clears throat> I want more rebounds. Uh, I need to shoot a better percentage. And last year, I was, I was a little shy sometimes. I need to take more shots. They might be a little, little tough shots, but I have confidence I can make those. And uh, I just need to set up my teammates more, and I feel I have the ability to do that because I can move faster. I can jump higher now. And as a team, we want to win league. We want to win districts. And our mentality every game is just be relentless and don't give anything. you got to take, take, take. And that's, that's just our mentality every game. That's our mentality in the postseason, in the league, in districts, and we just want to go as far as we possibly can. Well, we saw that mentality, obviously, uh, a week ago against, yep. against that Reese squad where, I mean, literally you guys were running the floor and it, and it seemed like you guys were on a totally another level, in my personal opinion, than what Reese was. Um, they just had they had a hard time. Uh, I believe it was Robinson hit the three, and before mm -hmm. I don't even know if it was before the the ball was out of the out of the net. I mean, you guys were already down to the other end. Yep, Zim um, made the layup. Yeah, it was it was it was just instantaneous. So obviously, pushing yourself is a huge thing. Kendall, uh, on over to you. You suffered a pretty rough season-ending injury last yes. year, and tell me a little bit about for those that may not know. Tell me a little. Tell them a little bit about the injury. Um, that you had and how you're coming back from that right now? Uh, so I tore my ACL in January and that was very, very hard. So um, I rehabbed a lot, a lot. Um, for a while, all I could do, I couldn't jump, so I would just form shoot for hours. And then it, I would get more strength in my legs, so I would just shoot free throws for hours. And then when I finally got my brace, I was cleared to jump and stuff for a month and I was just wearing that just to get used to it and then I could finally actually play five on five like contact and I got to play volleyball season which I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to participate in that so I did get to do that and I was super excited about that and so now I'm on basketball season and my leg is brand new and it's stronger than it ever was so it's great. It's going to have to look at Walmart right? Yep. <laughs> there it is. We're ready to go. Yep. So what are, what, are your, what are your goals uh, this year, uh, personal goals, team goals? Uh, I mean, what are, you, what are you striving for right now? Um, well, team, we want to win league and district. That is our goal. And then for myself, um, I am trying to play college basketball. But because of my injury, most people have already signed all their 2019s. So I kind of have to wait, hoping that someone will leave somewhere and I can just slip in. And, but I have a couple people coming to the tournament next week, so hopefully that'll work out. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, Micah and, and Kendall both, um, obviously we just had several Division One athletes sitting mm -hmm. in studio and, and various sports, obviously Raina Frost with basketball and Nikki Bauer with, with softball and Erica Triber with, with volleyball. I mean, is that a goal of both of, uh, of both of you to play at that next level? Obviously, Kendall, I know it is for you. Um, Micah, for you as well, and yep. if so, where are you guys at in that process right now uh, as far as looking at schools and making sure that you're, you're taking every option that's out there to the best availability that's given to you? 
Uh, yeah, I'm just trying. Uh, they kind of talked about it the hour before us. You can't be dead set on one thing. You got to give a lot of places a chance. You got to feel out a lot of places and kind of see what what's right for you. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Obviously, I'm not going to get a full ride scholarship somewhere. So I have to seek out these colleges and I have to go visit them. I have to apply for them. And I'm kind of just my family and I are working together to see what's best for me. And I'm talking to a few coaches and I'm just really hoping that I can continue to get better throughout the season and kind of gain some more attention and uh, figure it out from there. If I if I can say it was really interesting when we drove in to listen to the um, to the three Hall of Fame athletes that you guys had had in here earlier, and uh, obviously being from the, the Thumb small area, not much exposure. Um, I talked to plenty of college coaches. Hey, you know Isaiah Williamson, for example, talking to college coaches that were more on the West Side, and they're like, ah, it's kind of. You know, I don't know if, if they think there's a player close that's closer to home, they're just going to recruit him because the thumb isn't on the way anywhere, right? right? Um, it's a, it's, it's a peninsula that's yeah. in another peninsula of, of Michigan, right? <laughs> and, and so uh, really unique with, with the thumb area. And so talk, listening to their interviews, you know, how all three of them got exposure was getting out, yes. going somewhere yeah. else to, to get that exposure. And... Um, It'll be really interesting with these two because both of them missed their last year of being able to do that mm -hmm. with AU basketball. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's a great opportunity that kids have to travel outside of the area, get exposure to other colleges that they were both rehabbing from, from injuries. And, you know, Mike, even though he played through the basketball season, I mean, he didn't play spring basketball. He didn't play summer basketball with the team. I think his first time going five on five was in September. So I mean, I mean, the, the, so they missed a big gap of, like Kendall was saying, of when kids are given the a lot of these scholarships mm -hmm. and opportunities. So um, a lot of it is is up to the the progress that they have this year and, and a few things that may be left up to chance. But um, I know they've they've worked hard for everything that they have, and and something good will come out of it. I'm sure. I know Kendall. I've talked. Never mentioned before, but I have talked about you to a couple of. Uh, Juco coaches that I know in the area, and they are definitely aware of you and <laughs> keeping an eye. So, uh, kind of piggybacking on that, Steve, absolutely. So we went from the uh, from the interview the hour before, and you know we, we we talked with the ladies, and they were they were talking a little bit about a failure sense, right? I mean, obviously, I'm sure that both of you could probably relate to uh, the junior year of being a failure in in a sense. I mean, not a not not, yeah. a, not an ultimate failure, but a a failure in how you rebound. And rebounding from that, I mean, tell me, tell me a little bit, both of you, tell me a little bit about how you're rebounding from that and, and what you're really striving for uh, moving forward. Obviously, getting healthy is going to be the biggest thing, but just tell me a little bit about that, Kendall. Um, I just, I just want my game to improve my ACL. First of all, I was, I thought I was done, which I mean, is a little excessive, but. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I was super excited to start the season, and once I knew I could play volleyball, um, really getting my trust in my knee back was what I needed. And once I got that, it was just, I was ready to go. And I'm just super motivated this year, especially going in with, um, like, no offers. I know that I have to go in every game and just get it done. Oh, well, you have that getting it done. <laughs> yes. Did the extra week help you at all, or uh, before, before the girls' season started? Oh, what, what, yeah. What? Well, and especially since volleyball went um, over a little bit, but I was working out, um, don't tell my volleyball coaches, but I was working out uh, <laughs> during volleyball season, so I was just, because I knew I had to come in this season with nothing mm -hmm. that I couldn't, I had nothing to lose. Right. Maka, how about for you on the mental, the mental side of things, I mean, where do you, where, I mean, where do you, where do you focus, where do you focus at maybe the most? On the mental side of things, or what? 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 what, what <laughs> are, you, are you taking your game at on the mental side of things? Um, for me, I had to stop asking why did this happen, and I had to start thinking what can I do. So how can I make myself better? If my leg can't work, then I'm gonna make my upper body stronger. I'm gonna try and gain some gain some muscle mass, and as my leg heals, I'm gonna try working on my speed. So if you're I had my doubts at the beginning like Kendall did, like, oh, man, how am I going to come back from this? Because it's just constant pain, and that starts to wear down on you mentally. So I really had to retrain my whole thought process and start thinking, this is a chance for me to strengthen something else if a certain part of my body isn't working. 
So I stopped asking why, I started asking what, and I'm still trying to take that mindset into basketball. If I'm uh, struggling with a certain thing, right now my shot percentage isn't very good, so I'm, I'm gonna be like, I'm not gonna say, man, I'm just you, shooting bad. You went six for six on Wednesday. Uh, but that was, <laughs> there wasn't much defense in the game. But against Reese, shot percentage wasn't Should've very well. Should have seven for six <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not just going to say, oh, man, I shot bad. I'm going to say, what was my shot selection? Where did I shoot it from? What are my decisions in the game? And I'm going to take it from there. So just got a great text about you, Micah, uh, coming from uh, Jeff York. He goes, he goes, Micah has one of the highest basketball IQs of anyone I've ever been around. So. Wow. We were we were we were told about that a while ago. Uh, Scott and I were told about that. Uh, what was that? Three three years ago, I think. Scott. Yeah. We were told we were we were told about. I, I don't even know if it was two, maybe even two years ago, uh, by by a certain coach. Um, you might play against them in the league, but we're just gonna <laughs> that that uh, we we hear a lot about this this Kramer kid that's coming up, and he's got a very very high basketball IQ. So yeah, definitely that's. Uh, uh, quite a recognition mm -hmm. as well from mm -hmm. lo local coaches. Steve, a little bit, um, you know, kind of maybe piggyback on what both of both of the uh, Kendall and uh, Mike have talked about as far as the mental game of basketball and um, how you can come through the the adversity side of things in, in basketball and I mean how you can even prepare for that. Yeah, I think uh, that's a big part of of what I do with working with a lot of the coaches and players that I do with throughout the course of the year especially in season, is getting everybody to understand that just because the season is here, the season's a marathon, first of all. Basketball's an extremely long season. It's going to be filled with highs and lows, exciting times, disappointing times. And the more we can wrap our mind around the fact that, you know, the, these roadblocks, these things are challenges, but they're also opportunities to get stronger, to get better, to get mentally tougher, and to gain experience that is going to benefit you know all of these, all of these players and all these coaches beyond when they're done coaching, beyond when they're done playing, um, and, and that's you know one of the biggest hopes that I have for everybody that that we work with is that they're developing characteristics through basketball that are going to make them better and stronger uh, when they become. Uh, when they have a job, when they have a career, when they become a, a mentor to somebody else, uh, when they become a, a husband, a wife, a parent, uh, whatever that that might be, um, and because realistically, the obstacles never change. You just might not be playing a sport anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and and those, no matter how good you get, and I'm sure the crew that was in here before as college athletes would have, a, even though it wasn't an injury, would have great examples of obstacles that they've had to overcome that made them stronger. I mean, I've tried out for, for teams in, in Europe where I didn't make the team. Well, you know, I can feel sorry for myself where I can take it as a learning experience and say, okay, the next time I'm in the gym, I need to work on uh, handling the ball better off of a ball screen in my decision making because that's what a lot of the international teams need me to do. I can't be just a, a triple threat shooter. You know, I got to uh, find different uh, things where I can do in a secondary help position, finding the gap, being one or two passes away. All of those little things uh, can, can make a player a lot better. But again, it's how you see the challenge and, and having the mindset of this is simply an opportunity for me to, once I get through it, I'll be better off. You gonna write a book any day, now? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just throwing that one out there. That, no, it's good. It, it really is. I mean, you know, I, uh, I do. I don't read. I do a lot of audible books, and uh, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm really big on baseball. Baseball's my thing, and being the mental aspect of baseball, and I read a lot of stuff on the mental game of baseball, and uh, you know, especially coaching a you know, child. And you're right. You know, it's, it's all about challenges, right? I mean, no, no matter where you're gonna go, there's gonna be challenges, no matter what those are, and. Obviously, you know, Kendall, Michael, you've already faced challenges, right? Mm -hmm. It's just how, how you're going to come back from those challenges and how, you, how you're going to take those challenges. So, Scott, do you want to take a break? Or? Yeah, yeah, we can take a break. Okay, all right. All right, yeah, we will take a break. Uh, Chris, i got to teach you how to do this. So you can just